I'm Peter Rivera. Howdy, dude. I'm Ben Vereen. And I love staybuddy.com. And you should, too. From the time that I was a kid, the Tony Awards were like my Christmas. They were my Hanukkah miracle. I will never forget watching Nathan Lane host the awards. I believe it was at the Majestic Theater, and it was the year that Julie Andrews didn't come to the awards over um, Victor Victoria. And he appeared in the full Victor Victoria costume with his back to the audience and then spun around and we saw that it was him. And he said, did you actually think that she'd come? And I fell in love. Um, Nathan Lane has paved the way for every character actor out there and also to every young queer performer wanting to work in comedy. He helped pave the way for us. The first time I actually saw Nathan was actually, I think City Opera, they did um, they did the pajama game back in 1990, I think. And I was like, who is this guy? I mean, he wasn't Nathan Lane yet. He was just Nathan Lane. And he was unbelievable. He was unbelievable. But of course, you know, who doesn't love Nathan? Who doesn't love the guy? I'm just happy to hear. I'm happy to, uh, you know, be up there honoring him and everything. And it's going to be a terrific day. I will give you a Nathan Lane story. Now I'm paraphrasing because I won't do it as well as Nathan did it, but he was here for Terrence McNally's honor and he did a speech before he started and he said, now I have something to say before this starts. I read the New York Times today that you can tell if a person is a homosexual by looking at their hand. If their index finger is shorter than the third finger, then they are homosexual. See this? So everyone started looking at their hands, and he said, I don't know if it's true or not, but I do know that Kevin Spacey is wearing mittens now. That's my Nathan Lane story. He goes for his truth. His characters go for what they want boldly. And I mean, they just, you know, falling all over everybody to get what they want. And to me, that is the essence of comedy, right? It's not the, the character, it's not a secret what comedic characters want. Like in a dramatic performance, it's kind of a secret, but Nathan Lane is just, he's bold, he's, he's a beautiful, beautiful man, and, and I can't wait to celebrate him today at this luncheon. Uh, Nathan is an iconic piece of this community. Uh, he's an amazing Broadway star and actor, and uh, I just love his work. <laughs> oh, little Nathan Lane story. Only one Nathan Lane story. Oh my God, there's too many. To <laughs> That's too far. <laughs> Uh, Nathan Lane, oh my, well, you know, I can tell you this, one of my favorite things about uh, Nathan Lane in our play right now is he gets to combine all of his clowning from all of those extraordinary years of performing in clown shows, and then he gets to combine his pathos from performing all those years in plays like Angels in America and The Iceman Cometh, and he squishes them into one play at the same time, and it is absolutely divine. Well, you know, I did Timon in The Lion King for a very long time, so I think uh, Nathan's Timon uh, on the screen probably resonates with me the most. <laughs> I would say The Lion King. I mean, I thought it was just so wonderful, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful story, and just how it's moved to Broadway and become like this whole different thing. You know, he really contributed to making that happen, so it's really wonderful. But I remember being. Uh, in high school and watching the birdcage and and uh, being obsessed with the fact that his performance was so amazing and full of such amazing camp but also so much heart and meat which I feel that you know that's 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 the difficult thing to do as a comedian is, is to figure out those ratios you know uh, and he's always been so brilliant but I was saying earlier I didn't get to see him in person until I saw frogs at Lincoln Center and it was, it was such a beautiful production. I, I didn't know the score, and I thought I knew every Sondheim score. And what I remember most was the image of him coming down on a boat, and just this melancholic look on his face that was so heartbreaking, yet so youthful 
and and energized and like you so you sort of saw the broken-hearted kid in there which I think is kind of like what makes him so genius uh, I actually uh, sent him a note afterwards his uh, performance as Gary and I told him that I thought he was a national treasure uh, I, I had the good fortune of of, of uh, I got to see King Lear afterwards and I thought Ruth was magnificent as the fool but I couldn't help but think wouldn't that be a good part for Nathan Lane I am so incredibly thrilled to be here to celebrate the great Nathan Lane Nathan Lane got a chance I got a chance to work with Nathan twice I was in the original uh, Broadway revival of Guys and Dolls of the Dancer and then many years later I got to choreograph Nathan Lane in the Adams family where he played Gomez and for me it was a real, real, an incredible honor for me to choreograph, to choreograph on this, this sort of music, this sort of comedy genius, uh, and it from, I'll never forget that. I love Nathan Lane. I love Nathan Lane. Nathan Lane was one of the first people I met 20 years ago when I moved to America. I was the assistant choreographer on the producers, and I was in rehearsal with Nathan every single day as he created that character of Max Bialystok. So I got to witness Nathan in rehearsal, in previews, and the glorious opening night of the producers. So I'm madly in love with Nathan Lane.